A while back, we had issues with some of our delivery packages being left by our garage where we didn't see them or if we were home, we didn't even know they were there. But whenever I expected something important, I'd put a sign out. But that didn't last long. So 3D printing to the rescue. Well, before we get started, you need to decide on the size of your sign. Now, for this tutorial, I've chosen 75 by 127 by 3 millimeter high, but that's just a working size for now. By the way, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of Fusion 360, such as creating a sketch and using the mouse to get around. Never assume. But if you have any trouble with Fusion 360, just use that help feature or the online help, and I'll have links to those in the description. So in Fusion 360, the first thing you'll need to do is create a new sketch on your bottom plane. Now, I find it's a lot easier to know which one is the bottom if I change my viewpoint to top. We'll start by making the outside of the sign using the two-point rectangle. Start at the middle and just stretch it out to 75 millimeters high by 127 millimeters wide. Now, you can enter the numbers and press tab to go back and forth between the fields, then just press enter to finish with this box. Well, now we can create another two-point rectangle for the inside box. Draw your rectangle anywhere inside the previous box and make it 71 millimeters high by 123 millimeters wide. It doesn't matter if it's centered, but it does matter that the smaller box is fully inside the outside box. If it's overlapping at any point, just double-click the inside box to select all four sides and then just drag it inside the outer box. Well, now we do want to center that inside box. Go up to your Constraint section and select Horizontal Vertical. Hold the Shift button and select the midpoint, which appears as an X, on the top line for each of the boxes. And then, with Shift still held down, do the same thing for each box on either the left or the right lines. You should see the midpoints line up at the top and on the side where you clicked. If not, Control z will undo step by step, and you can try again. When you're done with that, you can click Finish Sketch. Etch, sketch, etch, sketch. Next up is adding our text, and to do that, we need to create another new sketch on the bottom plane. After you do that, under the Create drop-down, select Text. Start at the bottom left corner of the inside box and make this box roughly the same size as the inside box, or even just a little bit smaller, and I do like to make mine smaller. And the reason here is to give us as much room as possible without the chance we go over into the border. We'll enter your text and format as needed. Bold and big letters will stand out better, and centering your text will make it look even more professional. You can even use special characters. If you're in Windows, open the character map, find your font and the characters you want, then just copy and paste them into Fusion 360. Now, you can also make sure that this text box is perfectly centered by using that same vertical horizontal constraint we used earlier. Well, when you're done with your text, you can finish Sketch. If you haven't saved your project yet, now would be a good time to do that. We need to start saving. Now we're going to use those sketches to create the actual 3D of our sign. If you can't see your sketches, visibility for them has just been turned off. So go over to the sketches on the left, click the I to get them back. You'll definitely want to see them for these next steps. Also, I find at this point that it's easier to understand what I'm doing if I'm looking at the side of the model, sort of, instead of straight down. So click the Home button on your View Cube to get a good look at everything. Now select inside any letter of your text. Use the Extrude function by pressing the letter E, and then you can drag that arrow up and down or just enter the number. We need the text to be one millimeter, so I'll type one and click OK or press the Enter key. If the Bodies folder on the left isn't open, you should check that now. You'll have a separate body for each letter of your sign. And we don't want the text on the bottom inside of our sign, so we're going to use the Move tool by pressing the M button. Under Bodies on the left that we just opened, we need to select all the letters. Use Click and Shift to select them all or drag your mouse over all of them on your work area. You'll need to select the direction, in this case the up arrow, and then move the text up by two millimeters. Well, this will have them show up on top of the sign. Hit OK or Enter to close this one out. 
Now to get our border, we're going to select between the lines of both boxes, not the sign or the text itself. You may need to zoom in a bit using your mouse wheel. Then you can extrude up by 3 millimeters to match the letter height and click OK. You should always name your new bodies if possible, and I'm going to name this new body to border. For the inside area of the sign, select an open area of your sketch somewhere in the middle, not the text or the border, and then just extrude up by 2 millimeters. Well, you don't want to join all your parts into one here, so make sure the operation for extrude is set to new body, and now you can click OK. And don't forget to name this new body to bottom or something you'll remember. And now you can turn off sketches to see your finished sign. It's a sign. Who needed a sign? Well, our raised letter and border sign is done, but there's still a lot more you can do. If you want to do a filament swap to make the top of your border and the text stand out, well, you can export your sign as an STL and make the filament swap adjustments in your slicer. For printing in multiple colors, you're going to want to export that as a 3MF file, and that retains all the settings for each separate part. Now, another way to print in multiple colors would be to make the text and border be completely flat with the rest of the sign. And this has an added benefit of not having any areas to collect dust or rain. The first thing we need to do to make this whole thing flat is to create a top border. And the easiest way to do this is by extruding. We can use extrude to push the border down by one millimeter, which makes it cut away that portion. Then you can hit OK. And now we just extrude back up by one millimeter, but we're going to make this one a new body. And the reason is we want to be able to color this new border separately from the bottom. So be sure to name this new body as top border, and you'll be glad you did that later when you drop it in your slicer. Next, we need to make our sign on the inside the same height as our letters and our top border now. But we also need to have our letters cut out this new portion of our sign. Because if we don't cut the background sign where the letters are positioned, well, your slicer will most likely completely cover over all the letters. And then you'll end up with something like this. Completely blank sign. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. To happen. Next, we need to hide our letters and our borders by selecting them all and either pressing V or right-clicking and selecting View. The bottom of the sign should be the only thing visible now, so click the top of it and extrude up by one millimeter, but make sure to make this one a new body. And don't forget to rename your new body as something like Sign Top. Well, now go back to your sketches and make them viewable. We need to extrude our letters like before, but to do that, we now have to turn off the bottom and sign top layers. So click them and press V or use the eyeball next to them in the bodies. And now, just like before, we extrude our letters up, but this time we're going to go the full height of our sign, three millimeters. But before we finish, make the sign top viewable again in bodies. And the reason is this extrude operation will most likely automatically change to cut, but if it doesn't, just select Cut and click OK. Now you can turn off your sketches and turn all your bodies back on and you can see your completed flat, clean sign. And you can now color this in your slicer for printing with a multicolor printer. Just, again, make sure you export as a 3MF file. Well, once you drop your sign into your slicer, you have a few decisions to make depending on how you made it. And if you're using a multicolor printer, you're going to be glad you labeled your sign parts in Fusion 360, because most slicers will show these labels, and you can change out the filament colors by just selecting the parts individually. And here's a quick tip to resize your sign in your slicer if it's too small or too big. Make sure to first resize everything all together so that it sizes proportionally. Unfortunately, this also has the added effect of increasing the height of your sign. So, you'll want to shrink the height back down to the original 3 millimeters so you're not wasting filament or time. Just make sure to unlock proportional, and that way you're just changing the height. Well, there you go. Pretty simple, personalized sign that you made in Fusion 360. And don't forget all the other things you can do while making your own signs, like adding chamfers and fillets to the edges and more. Well, there is so much that you can do when you're creating it yourself. So have fun, make signs, as we all learn, create, and amaze.